Traders, how are you? Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader. Today, we're going to be doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. Tons of stuff going on. Bitcoin just hit 57K, not 50, but 57K. Elon Musk, obviously talking about Bitcoin. We have all, all kinds of stuff uh, this week. Tuesday, markets were mixed. The Dow hit an all-time high. Wednesday, the markets was mixed again with the Dow reaching another all-time high. Wednesday, or excuse me, Thursday, the market was lower. Biggest daily drop in three weeks. This is way down about the losses of the t the communications and also the tech companies. And then Friday, we ended mixed as well. The Dow for the week is up 0.11%. The S&P 500, negative 0.71%. And then the NASDAQ is down 1.59%. In overseas market news, European is mostly European markets are mostly mixed for the week. Spain went up 1.19%, whereas the biggest loser there in Europe is 1.18% is 1 in Italy. Latin American markets mostly mixed as well. Canada ended up with negative 0.20%. And then the middle East and Africa, uh, South Africa was up 2.01%, the biggest winner, with Egypt being the biggest loser at 1.45%. And the far, far east, Taiwan, even though we had the situation where China flew those jets into their airspace, they still did pretty well in regards to their stock market. They went up 3.41%. And then the Sensex in India was the biggest loser at 1.28%. The biggest news for the week, it seems like it's Bitcoin. Uh, we had uh, we have kind of a, of a bunch of, of items of, of confluence items kind of hitting all at once. One, it's the fear of inflation, right? We have the money, per, the, the government printing money, more stimulus, more stimulus, more stimulus. Instead of kind of getting back to normal, it's going to add to the debt and you can't continue to print this amount of money without actually getting inflation. On top of that, because of the fear of that, everybody's piling into Bitcoin. That's why we're having this huge surge because Bitcoin at the end of the day is an inflation hedge. But another item that happened as well was that the Canadian government approved the first North American Bitcoin ETF. Now, some analysts are predicting that the United States is going to follow soon as well. But a lot of the the uh, regulators, a lot of the uh, uh, the big wigs, let's call them. They're saying that they, they're they concerned about the liquidity of cryptos in addition to it being manipulated. <coughs> GameStop. And... Um, and possible association with criminal activity. One of the things that might happen, I would say possibly in the near future, is Janet Yellen, which is the new Treasury Secretary, doesn't like Bitcoin. She says it's a conglomeration of criminal activity, just like the U.S. analysts are saying it. So we might see some regulation in regards to Bitcoin based on the fact that she's going to be the, uh, the new Treasury Secretary. Now, aside from that as well, Elon Musk also tweeted, and he said... Uh, Bitcoin is just as much BS as the US dollar, only less so. So, you know, obviously first or second richest man in the world, depending on the day. Huge, huge following. Obviously, that's part of the reason why Bitcoin is getting a second surge as well. Outside of that, the, the total value of Bitcoins have reached $1 trillion. There's 18.6 million Bitcoins out in circulation now. They're supposedly only supposed to be 21 million. It's capped at that level and it has surged 80% so far this year while Ethereum, which is the second largest Bitcoin or second largest crypto, I should say, Bitcoin and Ethereum together are 80, about 80, just over 80% of the market. The value of Ethereum went to 220 billion. Bitcoin for the week, it did hit 57K on Saturday while I'm recording this, but it did hit 56,337 and 50 cents, 23.37% last week. Week, while this week it was up 17.84%. Commodities overall, we had that situation in Texas. Uh, I, I don't talk about this too much on the English side as I do it in the Spanish side, but I think the next 10 years, the kind of freak you know, weather kind of things that we're seeing overall, I think we're going to have these problems over the next 10 years. And you guys can see with, with what started happening last year, you know, I think we're going to have a lot of economic problems. That's going to bring a lot of social problems, even though I still think we're going to have social problems anyway. And then on top of that, I also believe that we're going to have a lot of environmental problems, right? This was like a freak storm this year. I saw 
a picture where there's a there was a range, right? Let's, let's say there was a range of the highest snowstorm snowfall that we had in North America, and then the lowest, right? And it kind of was always like this. And this year, it literally almost broke out of the chart that they actually had. And you guys can see, you know, more hurricanes, uh, more earthquakes, more volcanoes. Um, so I think we're gonna definitely gonna have that. Now this freak storm in Texas. I'm going to ask the guys to, to put the pictures up here for you. It was so cold that it literally took down the electrical grid in Texas. Now, many of you don't know that Texas actually has its own electrical grid. So we have the West, the East, and then Texas. Now, part of what happened in Texas was the fact that they didn't winterize things like the nuclear power. And in addition to that, the wind power actually froze. So because the wind power almost went to zero, they had to institute <gasps> fossil fuels. They had to use natural gas to be able to make up the difference, and it just wasn't enough. So there was rolling blackouts throughout the entire state. And if you guys see some of the pictures, people have their faucet turned on, and the water just literally froze out of the faucet. Pipes were bursting, you know, from apartment complexes. There was water coming down from the roof that just literally, it, like a frozen waterfall. And you guys will probably see all that there in the pictures. It was, it was absolutely incredible. They did say, uh, outside of the wonderful weather in Cancun for Ted Cruz, they did say... That, that was hilarious. I don't know if you guys, if you guys don't know about it, let me know. I'll mention it in the next week. Uh, they did say that the it's frozen 50% of the, of the state's water, uh, water wind power, I should say, not water, wind power capacity. And by the end of the week, it also froze a lot of the production of things like natural gas and also oil. So, you know, the, the, the heads of the spigots, all kinds of, of equipment actually froze. They weren't able to use it. And that was part of the problem. So the, the U S production of oil actually collapsed about 40% from 11 million barrels per day down to four. And for the week, oil went down 0.38%, which is kind of unusual, right? Because we had the storm and then, you know, the, the, uh, the production was actually shut down. It went to 59.24, while international crew, which is called Brent, went up to 0.76% to $62.91. Platinum, platinum is another precious metals, which has had an exceptional amount, a big, big run. It's at a six-year high right now, third consecutive week positive. This is due to the fact that there's going to be a potential, analysts are saying anyway, that we're going to have a recovery in the auto market. And if you guys don't know the... The platinum is actually used in the catalytic converters to be able to control the pollution that comes out of the car. There was actually an article that I read recently saying that criminals can go and cut that out in less than 60 seconds. They just go into the car, chop, chop, they take the catalytic converter, and then eventually later they take the metal out, melt it, and then sell it. Now, in financing and banking news, financial and banking news, U.S. producer prices increased the most since 2009, jumping 1.3%. So the cost of goods and services have surged. So we haven't seen those costs yet. I don't know if you guys have noticed, even at Chipotle, for example, which is the best restaurant ever. They, I'm so ashamed they don't have a lot of those overseas. But anyway. They, they, even in Chipotle, you can see that they put less chips in the bag. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, the, you know, the, 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 I mean, if you guys go and not get buy vitamins, right? You guys see the, the bar, the, the bottle of the, of the vitamins. And there's literally seems to be less. It's just like a little thing on the bottom now, but they don't want to make the bottle smaller because then you would know that they were selling you less. It's like chips, right? You open up the chips bag and then you look, it's like literally like half full, right? Before they used to be full when I was a kid anyway. So uh, it's, um, this is this number of 1.3% with the U S producer prices increasing. This indicates that there's inflation at the factory gate, which is eventually going to move up to the consumer side. So we're most likely going to see inflation, uh, longer term, longer term, I would say maybe about three years or so. I say, we're probably going to walk into some serious, serious inflation, maybe three to seven years. And that's part of the reason is why we're seeing that huge surge in Bitcoin, because people are concerned about inflation on top of the for example one point another trillion 1.9 trillion dollar recovery plan for biden which probably won't be the last one and then they'll do another trillion and another trillion and another trillion it can't go on forever now the debt situation is also skyrocketed the global debt is increased by 24 trillion dollars reaching an amount of 281 trillion worldwide this equals about 355 percent of global gdp 
Now, we've seen historically in economies as well that once you reach, for example, 100% of GDP, it causes a lot of problems. Now, since the majority of the countries that have a significant debt load are those that hold the majority of the economy, for example, China has a big problem, United States has a big problem now, Canada, Europe, those three areas, because Europe isn't technically a country, right? But the Eurozone, that, that, that single economy, they are... In serious debt as well. And so that is over well over 50% of the economy. So if we have a problem with those 50%, those countries that hold the 50% of the economy, that's going to be a big problem overall worldwide. Now, the only major economy, they call it a mature economy, Switzerland was actually the only country to be able to drop their debt load, where some of the big culprits in the rise of the debt was, I have it listed here, give me one second, uh, China saw the biggest rise, excluding the banks, Turkey, Korea, United Arab Emirates, also South Africa and India saw large debt ratio increases. Other than that, in political news, the Ukraine's top prosecutor stated on Friday that investigations into the energy company from Ukraine called Burisma Holdings, the matter is officially closed. It was tied to the scandal for the impeachment for the previous president, Donald Trump, and that's a planned it's closed and they're not going to be able to investigate it or they're not going to open the case anymore so we'll just you know sweep it under the rug it's over on Friday, the Dutch Senate backed an emergency legislation to be able to maintain the nighttime coronavirus curfew after after a court decided that there was lacking legal justification to do so. Now it did pass 45 to 13. So basically a judge said that they didn't have justification to do so. And then they went out and they did it anyway. And this is basically going to be the new norm, right? At least in Europe anyway, in the U S it may be a little bit different. So this is going to be most likely a political president where the precedent, not president precedent, where the governments just decide to pass a law anyway, even though there's no justification according to the court of law, economic news, American filing first time unemployment benefits unexpectedly rose by 13,000 last week. It's the second week where we saw a rise indicating slower job growth and a declining new COVID-19 infection. So even though, how can we, well, never mind. I'm not going to get into the conspiracy there is. The, the, if you guys see the map, not the map, the pictures of the cases, they're actually collapsing. You know, that we've hit the peak and now we're really going down quite a bit. So hopefully we'll be able to start the recovery soon, even though I don't think there's going to be a return to normal. Other than that, at least 18.3 million Americans are still receiving unemployment checks at the end of January. The government uh, benefits end in the mid of January. So we're talking maybe about three weeks or so, three or four weeks. Now, unless they pass the stimulus, uh, you know, the package to be able to help everybody, then we're probably going to start to see some trouble. In manufacturing, which is about 11.9% of the U.S. economy, saw a drop of the manufacturing index down to 58.5 in the first half of the month. The reading for January was 59.2. And essentially, if the number goes down, it's not a good thing because if 11.9% of the economy is manufacturing and it goes down, that means that there's a big, it's over, you know, almost 12% of the economy of jobs. So, you know, more and more news now, we're starting to get more red flags that things aren't going great. In corporate news, U.S. retail giant Walmart saw shares drop 6.6% on Thursday after they followed the quarter four earnings miss. So they didn't make as much money as the analysts thought they were going to. But they also said that they want to strengthen their e-commerce business to be able to sustain the momentum and increase profitability. Caterpillar, construction company and equipment firm, they're the ones that, you know, all the, all the, um, or the, the big yellow machines that you guys see on the road and construction sites, they build those. They've been the second best performer on the Dow after Apple. It's 52.98% of the fast past 12 months. And they went up uh, 5% on Friday due to good earnings news. In trade news, the gigantic trade agreement between the European Union and Mercosur. Roll your R's, guys. Mercosur. That went to... Uh, it might be signed as the biggest historical free trade agreement in the history of the world that we know of. $19 trillion Mercosur includes Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay as well. The only problem is, is that the environmental record of a lot of these Mercosur countries is, is not very good. And so that might, you know, Europe is very big on environmental protection. 
So that might not pass for that reason. Chinese government, this is actually pretty big. Chinese government is conducting a review that may lead to a ban of the exports to, to certain countries based on state security concerns. Now, rare earth metals, if you guys don't know, are more, they're less frequent. We find them less than even gold and silver. And so if China, you know, the U.S. stopped mining them, stopped producing them because of the environmental protection laws, China basically owns the market. They have a huge percentage. The, the, the very first consumer, not consumer, very first producer and miner of these metals. And the biggest problem is that the U.S. military needs them for the military. So unless we actually produce, you know, open up more mines here in the United States, there may be a problem obtaining that for our military. And other than that, NASA's Mars rover Perseverance arrived in Mars, officially has landed for a seventh month trip there on Mars. They landed on an ancient lake bed to be able to try to find microbial life, fossilized microbial life. And now they're going to be headed for a tuck town in a rocky basin called Jesero Crater at the edge of a remnant river delta to be able to go ahead and continue exploring Mars. And in investment news, the UK Supreme Court, in addition to Brazil, held that Uber drivers are actually classified as workers rather than independent contractors. This is going to be a bit of a problem because, you know, if, if you lose your job or you just want to make a little extra money, you just, you know, download the app and then you just go take care of it. But now there's a lot of paperwork involved. There's a lot of extra costs that Uber is going to have to assume that obviously they're going to pass to consumers like you and I. And most likely what will happen is people will start using other apps, whether it's in drive or another kind of app that hasn't been regulated yet. And at the end of the day, it's not going to be help, be help for anybody. Facebook decisions to disallow people from sharing news in Australia is causing a huge backlash because they not only block the news from being shared, but also took down a lot of posts from government uh, pages and also charities. There, there's been a huge critic from the U.S., Canada, Germany, and the U.S. in regards to that. And there's probably going to be, we're getting closer to a confrontation in regards to the situation with the two big, powerful tech companies. U.S. Department of Justice charged three North Korean computer programmers from the hack uh, that was uh, stole about $1.3 billion in money in crypto. There was also a Canadian-American citizen that pleaded guilty to money laundering in regards to that as well. And four ministers of the so-called quad grouping countries are, are looking to set up a forum to be able to stand up against uh, China and Asia in addition to uh, restoring Myanmar democracy due to what they're they're calling the military overthrow. U.S. plans to take no additional actions in response to the pressure from Iran. If you guys didn't know, Iran, there, there's something that happens in the Middle East that some guys, may, uh, some of you may not know. They're called proxy wars, where we have U.S. financing people, for example, like Al Qaeda and Iran. Uh, financing another group and then the groups fight against each other but it's not a war per se but they're funding the people that are actually attacking each other right so recently there was a missile strike against u.s forces in iraq from the groups by iran and a few days later biden decided to go ahead and step back to the table to be able to speak with iran about going back to the nuclear agreement iran is saying that they need to drop all the tariffs and the restrictions that place Trump for, on the Iranian economy. And then the U.S. is saying that they need to back off of their uh, non-compliance of the deal. So it looks like they're on opposite sides and they're trying to reach an agreement. The U.S. also has officially joined the Paris Agreement on Friday as well, reinvigorating the supposed global fight on the climate change as the new Biden administration is planning to have drastic emissions cuts over the next three decades. One of the things that you guys have to understand as well, I'm all for protecting the environment, right? But the, the Keystone Pipeline, for example, that oil that's going through that pipeline is not going to stop to be shipped. What's going to happen is now it's going to go by rail, which costs a lot more money, and there's a lot more carbon emissions because they have to send the oil with a train, right? And then they have to unload it with cars, et cetera, et cetera. So the oil that's coming from Canada isn't going to be stopped, it's just going on trains, which happens to be owned by a great donor of the Biden administration, which is Warren Buffett. So you guys see how it works? It's not really protecting the environment because if it was, they would look at transporting the oil in a way that produces less carbon emissions because it's carbon's fault, right? Well, that would be the pipeline. So not only did we use tens of thousands of jobs with the pipeline being shut down, but we're actually causing even higher emissions by sending the oil via, via train. But, but it's okay. 
Warren, Buff- Warren Buffett is making the money. It's okay. And other than that, China's experiencing extremely cold weather uh, in both the tropical, from the tropical Pacific and Arctic situations. Seems like all over the world. I read a report as well that the climate last year was actually 0.1 Celsius degree lower on average in the last 20 years. We also, if you guys don't know, it doesn't appear a lot on the mainstream news. We, we have a lot of volcanoes that are going off and that there was a situation, there was a year, I, I recommend you guys Google this because this is part of the reason why I say that we're going to have a lot of environmental problems, for example, in the next 10 years. There was a volcano in Indonesia, I believe it was Krakatoa, I'm not, I don't remember the name, but you guys can look it up, just Google year without a summer. There was one volcano, one, that exploded and put such a plume of ash in the air that it blocked the sun and we couldn't, we had trouble growing food because of that situation. So the next year was known as the year without a summer. And this is kind of what I see happening right now. This isn't kind of official information. This is just my opinion. We have all these volcanoes going off now. And in addition to that, we have a solar minimum coming out, meaning the activity from the sun is going down. It's a cycle from the sun. And that's most likely the reason why we're having colder temperatures. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to like the video. We'll see you next week.